Hi everyone, this is Kelly from The Truth and Story, and today, uh, being the first day of March, which is becoming a tradition to be hashtag March of the Pips, um, I thought it would be great to put out a um, walkthrough of my newest Pip deck, which is the Seventh Sphere uh, Tarot deck from... Um, labyrinthos, uh, www.labyrinthos.co. Uh, so here we have, uh, I, I did recently a walkthrough of their Seventh Sphere Lenormand, and you can see that this is intended to kind of go together. We can see the beautiful internal, um, a matchingness, but it does also kind of, it's beautifully packaged. I mean, come on. <laughs> this is just awesome. I love, um, I wonder if it's white on the inside. And pay attention, no, it's got green on the inside. Um, but you can see that they're packaged beautifully together, and we'll look at these later on how gorgeously they also play together. So if you know me very well, you know that I do like my little sets of decks because I do use uh, Lenormand and Tarot together, so hopefully maybe they'll put out an Oracle deck to go with the Seventh Sphere. <laughs> if not, I, I actually do have some Oracle decks. I've already used these together uh, in some readings. I have actually used this deck for myself as well as for a couple client readings, uh, and it's, it's just beautiful. I quite um, am in love with it. I knew that this was coming before I purchased this, and I knew I was going to want this, uh, so... Anyways, what can we say? What can we say? Again, I think with any Seventh or any Labyrinthos products, their packaging is really beautiful. It's just top notch. We've got the magnetic closure on the side. We've got the rose gold gilding that we have on here as well as on the back of the Lenormand deck. Uh, we have that here. Um, we do have uh, some stars around the... Um, seven-pointed star here, uh, which is a little bit different than we had here on uh, the Lenormand deck, so it kind of sets it apart. Uh, but again, it's that one of, this is my favorite setup of a box with this little magnetic closure. There is no little white book, and as of the time of this uh, walkthrough, there is no app. So there is an app for this deck. Um, and there is an app coming for this one, but it is not, as of the date of this walkthrough, it is not available yet. Uh, that would have meanings just as they did with their um, golden thread uh, tarot. So that is coming, um, and so we'll be able to look for that. We have a quote in the back of it that says, what heaven dreams the earth brings forth, you blaze in the sun, glimmer in the stars, and dance in the rhythm of creation. So that's really beautiful. On the back we have the title, some examples of the cards, and it just says a Marseille tarot deck illustrated and designed by Tina Gong. 80 cards and companion app with meanings and lessons. Again, that's uh, I ha can't say anything about that yet because uh, it's not quite it's not available yet. So we have that. There are, um, the backs of these are sort of a corally peachy color um, here versus the white, but it does just have the plain seven star, not with the stars around it, as we saw with the Lenormand that was on white, but they look really beautiful, obviously, together. <laughs> um, you can definitely tell, you know, it was meant to kind of go together as a set, and it's really um, really gorgeous. So the cards are the same uh, plastic cardstock that this company is known for. Um, I have borrowed um, my friend Patrick's um, gold thread tarot and I absolutely love to shuffle it um, but it really wasn't one that I wanted to purchase myself um, but so when I saw this one come out I knew okay this is the one this is the one that I can have that amazing shuffling with um, full size and it is just as wonderful as I had hoped so uh, I, I will talk about that more once I can gone over the cards and can shuffle it okay I just checked to make sure whether or not there was an app for this and there isn't as of right now.
So let's get to the cards. Um, again, really beautiful, extremely thin plastic card stock that is waterproof. Uh, if you've not ever um, felt one of their decks, they're, they're really beautiful. They're waterproof, very thin, very flexible, very sturdy, and they shuffle probably as if you're a riffle shuffler like I am, there doesn't get much better than this, other than the Russian Victorian <laughs> Romantic version uh, tarot. So there are two extra cards. There is a Tree of Life card and a Return card. Now, there isn't... Um, there isn't any guidebook or little white book or anything to even say what these might stand for. Uh, so obviously if you already work with the Tree of Life, um, it has a Kabbalah symbol here. If you work with the Kabbalah, the Tree of Life associations, that might be something interesting to you to use. If you work with Tree of Life, like I do work with the Tree of Life, but more in the mythological context and spiritual context than the Hebrew uh, mythological or spiritual context. Uh, and so you could obviously just use it as a tree of life in that way as well. Uh, and the return uh, is interesting because you kind of have a bit of a feel of the fool. Um, what are we returning to? We can see this figure in the background, so maybe return back to source or spirit. Um, obviously, you could use these however you chose to use them. Um, how they intended them to be, I'm not sure because, again, there isn't anything uh, right now that tells us uh, what you might do with that in a reading. I don't tend to use extra cards. There are some exceptions to that, but for the most part, I don't use extra cards in decks, so those will be getting set aside. So I'm going to set those aside over here. Uh, and start with the card. So you can see though, uh, just let's pull this one back out. There is gold foil detail. There is gold foil on the titles. This obviously has a star. I don't think every single one does. Perhaps all of the majors might. Uh, but then you can also possibly see in the stars in the sky they have little gold foiling as well. So there is multiple uh, points of gold foiling, again, especially in the majors. We'll see how, where that ends and or doesn't end as we go forward. So let's zoom in a little closer here. Just a little bit longer <laughs> or closer. <laughs> I don't know why that song came in my head. Why not? <clears throat> Oops. Nice and close. There we go. So here we have the Fool. Now, this is obviously marketed as a Marseille deck. Um, you, I feel you get a little bit of a blending uh, going on here, but let's see as we go. Um, here we have a traditional dog. Uh, we have a fool that uh, looks to, to be a woman just in terms of hair length, but I don't think there's anything that causes you to read it one way or another, um, which is kind of nice. And you'll see that, I think, in some of the cards in a, in a beautiful way. So I like this entering doors and doors. You know, there's a doorway, another door. That idea of just kind of going forward into new beginnings. I think it works really beautiful. We do have the traditional dog uh, here, which we see in Marseille-style decks as well. Uh, I really like the Magician here. Uh, I think that... Um, obviously, this, this appears to be a female to me just because of the haircut, which is a flip. This would not be obviously a traditional Marseille to have a woman magician. But they were often tricksters as, or cobblers as well. So there's, you know, there's some room. I definitely don't feel like this is... Um, put into an exact just modernization of the Marseille. There's been changes and shifts, but I do really like the um, uh, this two-sidedness. Now, I don't read with reversals, so, and this is not in all the cards, 
but I do like this idea of as above, so below. You've got those sort of two fields here, um, the upside down world and the upright world, right? <laughs> but I do like that you have all four of the coins. Uh, you have sort of a day and a night kind of feeling. You have tropics and mountains. You do have that this sort of what's happening in the, or these are probably clouds and earth, you know, what's going on up in the heavens and what's going down on earth. So you really have that connection, I think, to as above, so below, and certainly with the finger pointings uh, as well. I really like this uh, High Priestess. Uh, you still can see the tower somewhat in the background, uh, which I think I could be wrong. I feel like that the towers in the background may be more of a, a more modern take than a, a straight uh, Marseille. I should probably have a Marseille deck out to compare. But you do see the hints of the towers here. I love that we see the sort of universe in her drapings. Um, I do love that the crescent moon is still there. She has a book in her hand. You can see the um, foiling on the stars and around Saturn and I think that that is uh, it's just really lovely I quite like her as a high priestess here we have the Empress uh, and so again beautiful we have the shield which we often see we have a pomegranate we have the scepter, so definitely that ruling queen that we often do see in the Marseille. We do have vegetation behind here, which gives sort of the modern Mother Earth feel to Empress, but she does have her shield and her scepter and her crown. Uh, so we do, and then we have the stars around the crown. Uh, so I think that, that it's a nice um, take on it. Now, this brings us to uh, the, the one printing error that is in this deck. Uh, which is that both the Emperor and the Empress um, are number three. So obviously the Emperor should be number four, uh, but it has been misprinted to three. Uh, I don't, I, I contacted the creator just to see if there's anything to say about that or what, if there's going to be any uh, reprint of the card or anything like that. Um, I love it. I love things like this. Um, older Marseille decks are known for having all kinds of weird uh, placements of titles or flip titles or different kind of errors like that. And so I think it works with the history. I also love that it's the Emperor and the Empress and they are both on even playing field. Uh, even if they fixed this card, I would leave it as it is because I think it's it's neat. It's just one of those things for me that works. You can see they both have the same scepter. They both have a similar shield just with different color tones. Um, we definitely have more of the sun uh, going on up here. Uh, different types of crowns. Obviously he doesn't have the crown or all the stars around his his crown either. So it's, it is, uh, you also have a sort of lightness and dark here, reds and greens. It's de definitely uh, an interesting combination and I quite enjoy it. This hand kind of freaks me out a little bit to be honest because I don't even know how his hand is doing what it's doing. <laughs> it because there's a little bit of kind of floatingness to the images. They're not supposed to be exactly, you know, you got floating hands here. Although this kind of looks like obviously it's coming out of the cloak, uh, as do these. But um, sometimes you can get some odd things like his hand. <laughs> but that just adds personality. Uh, so we have that. Here we have the High Priest. I really love how that the scenery kind of blends into the cloaks. For example, like again, and especially because these two go together in, in a sense, right? You have the High Priestess and the High the High Priest and the High Priestess, and she's got sort of the universe, and he has the more of the earthly planes. Uh, and in his, you could kind of see like a, um, a shape of perhaps a church here. Uh, you certainly have the mind uh, being more focused. 
here we have the key reference we have some of the finger gesture references um, but I do like that sort of physical uh, in this world um, the mundane world and this being more into the internal and or the higher realms uh, and yeah, of course he connects the two but I do quite like it we even have two towers behind but they're a little bit differently they don't have the eyes or the colors the same so I do think again I really like that I like the um, what's on their cloaks uh, and what you could do with that in a reading here we have the lovers card uh, and we have uh, some twin snakes here twirling about here instead of an angel uh, have a sense of healing with that uh, that symbology there to me, it always comes to mind with the, the entwined snakes on a rod. Um, we have a black and white figures here. Uh, they are, could be, you know, they're kind of unisex, which is nice. Uh, and so, but it's just kind of a traditional, uh, but again, this to me is a little, you know, feels a little bit more uh, Rider Waite Smith style with two people in the one. Oh, you do get that with the regular lovers as well. Um, although I think of some of the older decks where they've got like the um, three people where like the man is having to choose between two women and so on and so forth. But here we have this. Uh, here we have Chariot, which is a woman. Again, so it's not staying strictly with tradition uh, here. So when they say Marseille, and it doesn't say Marseille on the front, but it does say a Marseille tarot deck. Uh, and so they're definitely not sticking rigidly with tradition because it would definitely be if a male here. And this is very clearly female in terms of hair and everything of that nature. This is my birth card, so I do quite like chariot cards that have females in them um, but uh, and you do have the nod to the uh, uh, curtain above the chariot that often has the star fields we have the black and white horses you know you can see this is very illustrative art um, much like we talked about with the um, um, seventh sphere Lenormand it has that sort of, of uh, um, illustrative style but with a little bit softer uh, feel to than some straight illustrated style. I really think that Justice is gorgeous. Of course we have Justice as eight so they did stay with the uh, more traditional older decks uh, on that factor. Um, so we do have Justice here, Justice being blind but seeing with her third eye. We have the traditional scales and the sword. Uh, I do quite think it's beautiful. Love this hermit. I love, love, love this hermit. Uh, we have a lantern. Sometimes in the older decks you'll see... Um, just an older man on crutches. Sometimes you'll see an hourglass. I would have loved to have seen an hourglass. But this is absolutely beautiful and I love it. Here we have the Wheel of Fortune with a flying monkey and a fox and a hare. And we do have the astrological signs uh, in the center. And I suppose you could make, although it's hard to sell with a mutedness, but we could be looking at air and fire and I'm guessing earth and water, although these both look blue toned to me. Um, but one's probably more of a, gr a green and one's more of a blue. Uh, so you have that sense of the wheel of time there. We have strength at 11, which is beautiful. Um, I do love the serenity. Um, I love the hand placement here. It is much more of a sense of being in union with uh, versus the traditional, which would be traditional for Marseille, idea of force where they're either grappling the lion or pulling the lion's mouth open. Um, sometimes you'll even get them of just holding a... Um, holding a big pillar, just that sense of strength as well. Here we have a hanged man, 
uh, with a snake around his leg. Traditional four, uh, number four kind of uh, leg positioning there. Uh, very interesting with the tension uh, between the rope that I think is quite interesting. Uh, you do, even though this isn't, you can see slightly blue at the top. I don't know if you can tell that, where this almost does look to be a, um, a, the, a originally have been a cross, although it was a look to crop down to just more this traditional uh, hanged man style. Um, but you can tell from the cropping that didn't quite crop down enough. Um, that it looks like it was perhaps originally to be more of a straight cross. So that is uh, interesting. But, it's, you know, you see this and you see the hanged man. It's, it's pretty clear. I think this is gorgeous. Um, this is obviously 13 now. Unlike many traditional decks in which death is not numbered. We do have the number 13 on the death card, but I do love, uh, of, of course, we have a traditional cloak and the scythe and the skeleton that we'll think of with the death card, but we also have the lilies cards and that idea of birth, rebirth, or new growth coming up, uh, and a balancing of energies that can come up with the lilies. It's just, I just think it's a really clean, precise and certainly less uh, graphic than some <laughs> old style death cards where they are uh, hoeing and um, gathering in body parts off of the ground. <laughs> Here we have Temperance who uh, you know has the two cups with a sort of rainbow between them. Uh, we have uh, what looks to be the elemental sign for fire. Um, we do have sort of some water down here and the sun, so you get that sense of fire and water uh, as well. So I'm not sure exactly why we just have the triangle um, in between. Again, we don't have, I, I really wish there had at least just been a little white book um, to state that, but maybe once the app does come out, you know, there would be some indication for some of these little details of why they're there. Uh, here we have the devil card. Um, I don't believe that the chained people... Nope, I'll take that back. This is the Dodal. The Dodal and the Noble tend to be ones that you can look to as uh, decks that sort of solidified the Marseille system. And here we do have the chained, although they look to be more devils than actual people, but we do see them chained here. I quite like the mask feeling of this. Um, it is interesting. With Right Away Smith, you have quite a large... Um, uh, loop around their neck where you can just easily take it off, which you don't get here. However, we don't really see indica any indication that their hands are bound, uh, so they could still have that connotation of being able to come out. Um, but the, they're quite known for the crazy devil faces and things older decks are. Uh, the devils are pretty uh, interesting in older traditional decks. I love the tongue uh, hanging out, as you saw in a lot of them as well. So I quite like that one. Here we have the tower. Uh, fairly traditional. It's quite interesting that we have one standing on the ledge and one has fallen down. Don't often see that in tower cars. You very often are seeing uh, two, um, you know, two people falling. So one usually of higher estate, looking well dressed, and perhaps another being a peasant. Um, I like the eyeball here. Of course, it makes me think of the eye of Sauron. <laughs> makes me think of Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> Here we have the beautiful star card. I think this is gorgeous. Uh, we have the waters here. Um, here's what I was talking about with the older lover's card where we have a man having to choose between two women and or maybe choosing between mother and bride or an older, wiser bride versus a younger, virile bride. Uh, so that is quite common uh, in the, those decks. I wanted to point that one out. 
So, you know, just to, to be, I should have said this at the very beginning, but there is definitely that understanding that, or a, a need to be clear that Marseille decks, uh, to me, speak to a very specific type of deck, right? Uh, and it actually speaks to the way in which uh, often uh, the num the actual pips are set up. So n all Marseille decks are pip decks, but not all pip decks are Marseille decks. And so what you you know what determines uh, what is a pip deck. Um, and what is not a pip deck, uh, or I'm sorry, what determines what is a Marseille deck and what is not a Marseille deck um, is, is an interesting conversation. And I would argue that this is a little bit more, I don't know that I would, myself, if I created this deck, I don't know that I would label this a Marseille deck. I would label it a Marseille style deck, uh, but I don't think I would label it a... Um, straight Marseille deck because there's definitely changes that have been done here. Um, there's the tower. Just kind of getting a couple of these these out so you can see because you can see the force uh, where the mouth is being pulled open which is pretty common again even with right away Smith. Um, so yeah so that would be here's some death reaping Reaping body parts. <laughs> um, so yeah, now I'm getting now I'm getting sidetracked as as I pull out the the majors here, just to see if anything else has stood out um, from the ones that we've already looked at or that may be coming. Okay, I think that is good enough. So, back to the star card. It's beautiful. And again, I don't think that that's so much an issue, uh, other than it's just an observation as somebody who's, who's just reviewing the deck. Um, I don't know that I would call this a straight Marseille deck. Love this moon. Uh, we definitely do see a tradition with the moon cards. Uh, with having that sort of lobster or crab of some sort coming out of the water. Uh, that is definitely a tradition that is seen. Uh, and we have the two towers here. I was trying to find it. I had seen the moon, but of course not when I'm actually looking to show it. <laughs> but I love this. I love that we have the cycles of the moon here. I think it's fantastic. We have sort of the dog and the wolf. We have the black and the white dog. We have the crab coming up. I do quite like it. And I love the sun. You know people, you know I am not fond of babies and sun cards and many of the traditional sun cards and uh, have strange like adult shaped babies in them um, and so I am quite fond of this deck with the black and the white lily uh, the bird uh, the hands around it's just the sun uh, I think it's really gorgeous I think it's really gorgeous <laughs> I just like it um, and then we have ju judgment what's interesting I wonder if this is kind of tied to the return card let's see Uh, no, nope, because she doesn't have anything over her head. You kind of a little bit of the of the feeling of the the mountains in the hierophant and the stars in the high priestess that are going on here. Uh, and so we have this kind of calling forth. We do have the what looks to be maybe a death uh, or death head. Is that what they're called death head moth? Um, but I think it's really, you got the trumpet that does relate to the angel. So it's a really beautiful card. I don't think it's difficult to see the judgment card in this. Uh, and it's just beautiful. And then we have the world card, which is uh, pretty traditional uh, with the uh, sort of laurel leaf that is around it. You can see we have the human being here. We have the kind of bird of prey here we have a lion and we have the bull uh here so we have that 
um, again, the universe open. We have the laurel wreath, so quite traditional there. Uh, they seem to have a kind of recurrent motif with the lilies uh, that's quite beautiful. Not traditional that I'm aware of, but quite beautiful. So that is uh, the major arcana then that we have gone through. And that brings us to the... Um, that brings us to the minors. Now, all of the my aces do have hands in them, which isn't something you really see in Marseille style decks. Uh, you just especially for, at least for, I mean, for the coins and for the cups, you won't see that. Uh, and so that has definitely been added in uh, here and feels a little bit more uh, right away Smith. Uh, than Marseille. So then we have the beautiful cups. I love the fish that are going on here. Uh, we have, of course, the two cups. You do often see this sort of bottom where it's kind of split between the two, um, almost a top part and a bottom part. That is something that you'll traditionally see. Uh, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, we have a three. This is, again, very traditional structure. It's beautiful. A four. Very traditional uh, with the way that even the foliage is going. Uh, same thing here. You can see even the buds uh, that are going inward, the flowers that are here. Uh, and so you actually have, so far, in terms of the pips, you can see that it is quite uh um, following the pattern of the pips. Here we have the five. Now we do have the upside down cups, which is a uh, more of a nod to a Rider Waite Smith. Uh, and the foliage is not what I would say to be the same as at least of the Dodell. I'm not pulling out all of mine. Um, and again, that to me is a little bit more of a nod to the uh, Rider Waite Smith. Uh, we do have the six quite similar with the flower kind of flower representation going up the middle. We have the seven, again, similar pattern uh, here with just the leaves that we see here. And the pattern of the cups is the same. Uh, here we have uh, with the eights a very similar, same pattern of the cups and very similar um, pattern with where are the flowers. It's a different kind of flower, but there's still a flower uh, at all of the points. Uh, and then we do have some leaves in the same places that we have leaves. So quite st steady on to the structure there. Uh, here we have, again, the same sort of structure happening in the nine. And the lastly, in the 10, we have the same structure. So pretty, pretty close uh, with the exception of the Five of Cups. And again, this is just one example of, of a Marseille deck. Uh, so I would say they did a pretty um, close structure there. Um, the courts seem much more modern. We do have the page. Uh, now, the one oddity to me on this is that all of the other knights and pages are facing each other except for this one. So I feel like this image was meant to have been flipped so that they would be facing because all of the other ones face uh, each other. And so that, to me, stood out a little bit odd. Um, but we do have, you can see the pages are females and all of the pages are females uh, here. And there is precedent uh, for, for that uh, in some of the, uh, one, I think the sport, no, the Madrone, I think, had some extra uh, females uh, down in the court cards as well. But they were extra across the board. We're not entirely sure how they were used. But in general, that's a, a shift to have the female uh, as pages. Um, so then we, of course, have the knight on the horse, the queen. So as I said, all of them, except for that knight and page, the king and the queen face each other, and the knight and the page face each other. And you have the male-female on both. Uh, so you can see these are silhouettes 
Uh, unlike the major arcana, of course, which are the greater energies where all the people are not silhouettes, but, you know, there's some silhouetting going on, but there is more color and detail. There is much more of this pale silhouettes in the, in the people cards, which I think is interesting. And that brings us to the wands. Uh, there's definitely a hand often in the aces uh, and the swords, uh, which tends to be obviously more active energy. Uh, so let's see how these turn out. We have the double cross here with the foliage being again very similar. Uh, we have the threes being very similar foliage and setup. Same thing with the fours. I guess I'll see if anything stands out versus making you look at every single one. But I think it is important because when we label something as, as Marseille, that does mean something to a reader who actually may take the way that the foliage is into account. Uh, and so that is something to pay attention to. Uh, the eight is quite similar, except for we do have some extra foliage on this from the Dodell. Again, this isn't the only one, so I'm just kind of giving you what I have. And a little bit of added foliage in with the nine. And then we have the ten, which is quite uh quite like the uh, original. So we can certainly see the structure being kept the same, which I quite like. Again, here we have the page and the knight that are facing each other and the fire going on here. We have the queen and the king facing each other and all of the fire and just again, the sort of um, uh, silhouette, pale silhouettes here. Uh, that brings us to the swords. And I quite love that the swords are curved uh, because that is quite tr traditional, although you get both kinds, uh, but that's quite traditional. And it's something that I really love in a pip deck because uh, very oft sometimes when they're not, uh, you then end up not being able to tell uh, at, at a quick glance, what are swords and what are not. So I really prefer pip decks that have uh, swords being curved and the um, and the batons being straight. So there we have that. Uh, and so I'm just going to go through these as, again, they look to be quite similar. Uh, they look to have gone through um, to try to to set these up in a similar hip style, even with the foliage in the middle. Uh, again, some extra flowers here, but this is not the only deck. Um, so we then have the coarse court sword cutting through. Uh, some people would have different ideas of what is upright and what is not. Uh, and you certainly, if you if you do, like if this is always upright and you read reversals, you may need to mark that because you wouldn't be able to tell from the back. Uh, but I don't use reversals, so that's not an issue for me. So we have six, seven, eight, nine, and the two swords crossing with the tenth card, uh, which we can see here as well. So quite like that. Here we have the page of swords. I love her with her double sword and the knight of swords, very active looking. And we have the queen and the king of swords as well. And then that brings us to the coins. Beautiful ace of coins, love the traditional two of coins, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's an interesting ten pattern. I'm just going to peek here. Nope, that's... We've got the five and the five. Uh, we don't have it going all the way through. But we do have the flower in the middle and the leaves. So this has got a I think it was just throwing me off with the uh, this going up the middle. But the actual pattern of the um, coins being the same uh, there. I'm just going to peek at the, at the nine. Yeah. Yep. 
and then we have the page and the knight again facing each other and the king and the queen here. I will say that the green tones, uh, we have kind of blue, very strong blue coloration for the swords. Um, we have green tones with the coins, however, they're kind of, well, they're not when you're side by side, but, you know, because the colors are all kind of muted, um, it, it doesn't, well, they do. You do, and you also have the foliage, so yeah, I take it back. They seem to go, uh, you should be able to see these stand out well, actually, in a spread, but let's take a look. Let me zoom back out here. Whoops, whoa, how about we zoom out instead? This, by the way, because somebody is going to ask, is the is the Dodel, this is Tarot de Marseille uh, from 1701. Again, I, you generally hear the, the Dodel and the Noble as sort of, kind of solidifying the structure of Marseille decks. Uh, so they're good ones to use as sort of a, of a solid example of of a Marseille style deck. So I would say the pips numbers, the actual pips, uh, stay quite well to the sequencing um, of the mic or the pattern of the pips. Uh, whereas the courts, of course, kind of go out on their own and feel a little bit more modern with their um, You know, I'm curious about something now. Just a minute. I just pulled out the court cards to see if perhaps... I do like that the horse turning its head is similar to the horse uh, in the wands as well in this deck. Uh, they are both facing the same direction in here. But the uh, other ones, so are the um, swords... And then he's looking face forward. So I think the reason that stands out to me in this deck is because all three other ones are directly facing each other as well as all the kings and queens. So that just kind of stands out uh, strangely there. But again, those kind of random things, like here you can see all of a sudden we have all of these being this very similar to the titles, even va other valets. Uh, or pages, and then you have a giant one written here and another one written here. So you do have like inconsistencies and oddities in Marseille style decks. Uh, it's kind of part of their charm and people can even use that in terms of their reading. And so I think that all in all those things like the numbers on the emperor and the empress as well as that, it just adds that little bit of, of flavor. Okay, so I think you can see this uh, really is, I mean, look at how, look at that. I mean, if you are a riffle shuffler, uh, getting one of these, and there is the uh, golden thread, which is very right away Smith, black, gorgeous gold thread, uh, gold color all through it. There's also a white toned one that's like an iridescent. Uh, but for me, this was a bit of a no-brainer. I wanted one of these decks, and this one fits the bill. Yeah, I mean, I could literally shuffle it all day, and it snaps back nice and straight and perfect because of the cardstock. Uh, so let's see a little bit of this laid out in my traditional large tarot spread. I mean, it's really beautiful. Really, really gorgeous. Like I said, I have used this already for clients. I mean, it's, you know, I can, it's a deck. You can read it with, it's not like a, it's a typical pip deck, so it wasn't anything new for me in terms of reading for it, but just visually, I mean, it's just beautiful. You can see the pentacles do stand out away from the cups. Uh, you have the titles really standing out in terms of the courts and the majors. Uh, but it really is just a gorgeous deck. Um, it is a bit uh, light toned and pastel-y, so it does have a bit of a, what I would say a feminine 
uh, vibe, and I don't necessarily mean that by gender, but it does have a kind of um, soft uh, feel to it because of that haze, which I talked about with the, um, the Lenormand deck as well. I just want to quickly show these together because... And I don't generally lay my Lenormand cards this way, but just for ease of quickness. And I have used this already in a Three Voices reading. But it looks really beautiful. Again, this kind of beautiful illustrative style, but with a softness to it. That when you're, you know, when it's... <laughs> Again, it's really beautiful. I've come to love it. I was disappointed a little bit when I first got this because I wasn't looking for that. I was actually looking for more of a bold color palette for uh, the deck. And so I was kind of surprised to have it be that sort of hazy, uh, soft edge to it. But, um, you know, I've made peace with it and it's really... Uh, quite lovely. I just hadn't been expecting it. And then of course, you know, I would normally lay Oracle out. I have a couple Oracle decks that look really beautiful. Um, but, it, you know, they're meant to go together. So it's no great surprise that <laughs> it goes together really beautifully. Um, you could also do, I quite like sometimes to do... Uh, a bit of a three card. Yeah, I might do a three card on a question that I might have. And then use Lenormand, maybe pull a three card Lenormand or a five card. So if I wanted to then take what, you know, what's the next, depending on the question, uh, whether I would, what I would choose as a middle, but if I just wanted to, you know, do three card here, for sort of what's my next action, what do I need to take place. Um, it just looks really uh, beautiful together. So it's a lovely, lovely combo. Again, they were made to, to be together, but you don't need them both, obviously, unless you're like me and you do read Lenormand and Tarot and often together, then you've got this beautiful set. So for the kickoff of 2018 March of the Pips, here is a look at a gorgeous um, Marseille style. Again, Pips very Marseille-like. I would I would hazard the ma majors not being entirely what I would think of as that because there's definitely a lot of changes to bring it into the 21st century. Uh, and so you definitely have some changes there. But I do love that the configuration of the Pips are quite... Um, uh, are quite traditional because that does make a difference to somebody who may be uh, looking for those specific configuration uh, that the Marseille speaks to. So there you have it. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.